Hey, Kara. Um, I wanted to get us together and to say hi to everyone um, that's working from home. Um, right now, all of us are, um, because I get a lot of value in talking to, to my peer group, um, some other working parents about how they are navigating through this um, really unprecedented time. And Kara Benozian, my colleague here, and I talk a lot about this. And we wanted to do a little vlog to just talk about you know, how we're getting through this time as um, professionals, as parents, um, as human beings. And I could think of nobody better than to chat with you about this. So thank you for joining me. Thank you, Lauren, um, for having me. Yeah, so tell me, um, well, tell everybody else. I know a lot about you, um, <laughs> but, but tell me a little bit about um, who you are, what you do, what's going on in your, in your, in your life, not just, um, you know, your work from home situation, but what, what's going on with you? Sure. So hi, everyone. Thanks for asking me to do this, Lauren. Uh, I always appreciate the opportunity, especially if it could help one person. So I am a working mom as well. I have three kids who are on the younger side. So I have a 20 month old, a five year old and a seven year old. So I have uh, one toddler who requires supervision at all times. I have a preschooler and I have a second grader. Um, all three girls, so highly uh, emotional as well. I, from a work standpoint, uh, am trying to run a marketing team, and um, which is just a new challenge, having everyone be virtual, because for the most part, we were, we had a few remote employees, but 95% of the team was based in Boston. So that has definitely been a new dynamic. Um, I also am married, and it's just luck has it that in this crazy time, we're very fortunate, but my husband and I both happen to work in industries that are extremely, extremely busy. So um, I actually have a nanny at home and I realize how fortunate I am, not only that I have job security and my husband does, but also that we have help. And I know everyone's situation is different. I don't know that I would be able to get through this if I did not have help right now. Yeah, we have, so my husband um, works in finance. I, you know, work for Log Me In. Um, so it's been very busy for us, which again, um, has been a blessing. Um, but our kids are, um, fourth grader and first grader. So my fourth grader is pretty self-sufficient with what needs to be done, you know, in school on a day-to-day -day basis and I might need help with word problems, which by the way, word problems are epic. I can't say they were my strong suit back then. They are not, <laughs> it's been a whole new education. Um, but my daughter needs a lot of help reading. Um, so we are trying to figure that out. And like, this is week four. And I think we just just started to hit somewhat of a schedule and a stride, but the first two weeks, it was like absolutely bananas. Um, just no, nothing we tried worked. So yeah. well, in school um, is getting into a routine as well. So it's now adjusting to that schedule. Yeah, yeah, like you're popping on to a video meeting during the day or helping them with the different things um, that they need to do, which has been really interesting. Um, so what have you learned during this past month, like personally and professionally? Yeah, a lot, uh, and I continue to learn. So first, um, I have an office at my house, which also I'm really lucky, but it has French doors, so my children can see me. So I've had to <laughs> move my desk to the corner of the room and I have a lock on the door. So I'm basically hiding from my children every day, especially the toddler who, as soon as she sees me is like banging on the door and she can open doors now. So hence the lock, which sounds really cruel, but it's not intended to be. Um, so from a learning, I've learned that I need to hide. Um, I also, you know, this is a little bit deep, but I've learned to just kind of stop and take a breath. Breathing, I, I mentioned before, I have three girls, highly emotionally charged. Breathing is something that I, I'm always giving that advice when they're having a moment, like just stop and take a breath and let your body reset. And there, it sounds so, um, so simple, but it actually works. And I found that I need to do that. Um, take a breath, reset and understand like, what is the problem that we need to solve? And what do I need to actually get done today. Um, balance has been something as a working mom I've always struggled with, but um, I went back to BC and got my MBA. And I remember this class was around women in leadership. And there were these all these articles we had to read about can women have it all. And I like to prove people wrong. And I was like, I'll be damned, I'm going to have it all. But what I've really learned through this time, and the irony is it's from working from home that you can have it all, but it's just not in the same day. And so, um, you know, 
I've learned a lot around when I leave the house every day and go into the office, I, all I'm focusing on is me and what I need to get done that day and being home and having, you know, a second grader and a preschooler, even the baby, you, you have to stop and think about your kids and what they need. And I have a preschooler who is not interested in doing anything work related. uh, And she has to, like, you would be in school every day. You at least have to sit down and listen to the lesson that they sent over to you. And I have a second grader who just requires a lot of hands-on. She's super excited about school, but it's like navigating this world of their schedules and their um, meetings with their classes and what the homework assignments are that you need to get done. And I'm not a super organized person to begin with. And so it's really pushing me on that level as well as just pausing to make sure that I have time in my day that I can focus on my kids and what their needs are, which is something, you know, like I said, when I was in the office, it's like, they're good. They go from the morning until five, six at night and I don't need to think about it. Yeah. And you compartmentalize because you have that physical separation and everything's just been kind of pushed into you know a common space a common time um yeah i would say you know you're common about having it all and i was talking to somebody about this earlier today you, it is definitely a misnomer you something you can't do all the things all the time so something drops it's well like and, you can do them all well and i think that no, people like exactly. you and i you're always trying to be perfect at what you do and it's hard it's a hard reality to accept like I failed at something today, but I'm going to do better at it tomorrow. Yes. Either, you know, either I'm, I'm failing something at work, I'm failing my kids I'm fa- or indefinitely not living up to the expectations that I hold for myself as a mother, as a colleague, as a peer, as a marketer. Um, and I think it's something I've struggled with my whole life is being, being okay with that, being okay with that, with that, not achieving a certain level all of the time. Um, and just coming to that realization that it's okay that certain things drop, just set the right expectation and set the right expectation, not only with others, but with yourself, like Mm -hmm. you can't set the bar at a crazy level. Um, so what's going on? You three girls, French doors, you know, (laughs) your youngest can see you and is banging on the door. So like what, give me like a glimpse inside your, your average day, like in a couple of tips that you found has worked, obviously physical separation kind of be out of sight, out of mind when you need to get, get work done. But like, what are some other things that um, are working for you? Yeah, I think um, I learned this about myself and my children. I think I learned this on maternity leave actually. Um, Routine is super important. And I also know it's important for my kids. Like when we have weekends where we don't have anything lined up and don't get out of the house, it those are not good days. So that's one thing that I've really taken into this current situation is we have to establish some kind of routine, whether it's getting your schoolwork done. I've actually implemented chores for my kids, which is something I've always talked about, but I'm really doing it now because I'm home and can hold them accountable and myself. Um, so it's getting your homework done, doing your chores and making sure that there's time to get outside. And um, so routine has become really important. And what are those same things that we're doing day in and day out? It's also prioritizing. So for me, I always have this long list of to-dos and it carries over into the next day. And it's really prioritizing what needs to get done today. Like, is it that I have a really important meeting this afternoon and that's where I'm gonna prioritize making sure that I'm prepared for it and that I'm, I'm good to go for that. And I block my calendar for that. You have to prioritize because there's no way that you're going to get everything done that you need to, especially with all these other dynamics that are playing out. Um, I've also learned that you have to get away from your desk, which is very hard because the day just continues to roll into the next meeting. So part of getting away, like for me, I can't just like get up in the middle of the day and go outside. I'm just, I'm not the kind of person who would go to the gym in the middle of the day also because I can't like shower and redo my hair that quickly. Um, but I make it a point to block my calendar. I do not have a meeting after five, ideally four, but that's not always possible. And the first thing that I do is I get my kids, we put your shoes on and we go outside and it could be cold. I don't care if it's snowing. Like we will just do something as a family. We'll go for a walk around the block. We have this little super secret sidewalk near our house that connects our street to the bus stop. And, um, the kids love to go on that. And it's something that's so simple. And to me, I'm like, who cares about the sidewalk? But they do. And so every night, like we, as soon as my day is done, we get outside and we go down the super secret sidewalk. So it's just getting outside. And um, the other thing is every every night, I love to cook, but I never did it because I was always home and trying to get the baby to bed. And so I also, we sit down and I cook dinner and we sit down and we have dinner every night. And We've made it a habit over the years to talk about, like, let's talk about something good that happened in your day today. And I think Mm. that's something, you know, we don't do it every night, but we try to, and it 
they love to talk about it, like something that you're thankful for or something good that happened to today. That's awesome. I, I agree with both the routine thing. I, you know, I am pretty type A and week one of this whole thing, um, as I was telling you before we started this call, I literally had an Excel spreadsheet per child with, you yes. know, every 30 minute increment is what we're going to do. <laughs> And that lasted two days, yeah. to, to be right honest. Mm -hmm. Oh, totally right, right out the window. And then like we kind of gave up for two days and I was like, ah, we'll pretend like it's Christmas vacation. Like we'll figure something out. And um, so I think, again, you got to give yourself a little bit of a break. Don't drive yourself crazy with the, with the schedule and not trying to have every single minute planned. Um, but I actually stole an awesome idea from my sister-in-law. She's like, I make them, I give them a piece of paper. They fold it in thirds. And one thing is school one thing is chores and the other column is fun and they can do they just got to get all of that done during the day but they choose they choose you know the order in which they want to do it and we've gotten a little so that t has tended to be our friday schedule um and you know, we're, yeah it, it's because they are deciding you know so it gives them makes them feel kind of that they have control over their schedule. I can't imagine my two children wanting to have control when their mom's a control freak. So um, that's worked really, that's worked, worked really well for us. Um, last question for you. Um, you know, we're managers. We may, we both manage different marketing teams at, at Log Me In. And I think, you know, uh, not everybody on my team is a parent. We're all at different stages in our life, stages in our um, careers. And um, I think trying to figure out how to support your teams during this time, it's, you know, it's different for every person, but like, what are some things that you have been sharing with your team as we work in this um, new reality? I think that's really important. So for me, it's remembering we're all people. So we are not all parents, not everyone is in the same situation that I am, um, but we're all dealing with something. And so, you know, even even if it wasn't the situation, I had an employee work for me once who was the only person in an office in California and she got to the point where started talking to the plants. And so I get it like they're regardless if it's, you know, COVID related or not, I, I feel like I can um, empathize with people and it's really important in this time to have compassion for others. And that, not that I'm not a compassionate person, but I'm very results oriented and this has kind of caused everything to kind of slow down and prioritize and put people first. And for me, it's all about communication. So we have, you know, we do a lot through Slack and like every Monday, well, though this week it was Tuesday because who knows what day it is anymore, but um, I send some kind of note out to the team and it's really lighthearted and it's just kind of like a, hey, how is everyone doing today? Like this week I asked everyone what they ate for breakfast. Um, just something to try to get people talking and communicating with one another and, and not just being like, where's this report that I asked for kind of thing. Um, so it's, you know, being kind, being compassionate, remembering, you know, what we're all dealing with right now. And, and I've said this a few times, but we're all dealing with this like work from home thing and our personal dynamics and how everything is different. I don't even think that we're taking into account anybody who's dealing with somebody who's sick or who may be at high risk. And I think that's something that we continue to overlook as we just keep driving business forward. And everyone's situation is truly different. One thing that I did, and you actually made me... Um, realize this is in the whole light of being compassionate and remembering that we're people. I also don't think everyone has a good perception of how they're viewed. And I, I know you're the one who made me think of this because I think the world of you, Lauren, and wanted to kind of build you up. And so I had this idea of what if we all said something nice to one another? And so this was a few Fridays ago, I, I reached out to my team on Slack and just said that and said, you know, one thing that we could all do is provide somebody else with like a compliment or let them know like how great you think they are. And so I encourage you all to reach out to somebody on the team. And I thought, you know, as a leader, I need to not just say it, but I need to show it. And so I went through every single person on the team, the extended team, and then some, and just told them like something that I appreciated about them or what a good job they were doing. And it, it rolled into Saturday. Like it went from Friday into Saturday morning. I was still like, oh, I, so forgot awesome. this, I forgot this person, but it made me feel so great. And it made them feel so great. I don't think I've ever had so many positive interactions with folks. And it was something so basic, but I think that's just one thing to remember is like, yes, we're all driving hard and we're trying to, you know, we have a great business going and, and there's, it's really busy. And we're, that is such an awesome opportunity that we all have in front of us. Um, but it's simple things that could make the difference in somebody's day. And, and so it's not, you know, I'm not prescribing anything to folks, but it's just, I think my message would be, it's the little things in life. I truly believe that, especially in a time like right now. 
I, I couldn't agree with you more. I think we all maybe undervalue the the impact of kind of kindness, the impact of gratitude. Um, I know I have to constantly remind myself, you know, to about those things. And, you know, I'm not naturally a very grateful person, which is something, you know, it's been one of my personal struggles to just throw my life to just focus on the good, focus on what we have that is good. Look for the, look for the silver lining. Don't immediately go um, mm -hmm. to what needs to be done. What didn't get done. You know, that's kind of, I, I have a natural bent that way, but I think one of the things that I've learned um, throughout this process has been, we had a pretty geographically dispersed team and we do have a nucleus of people in, in certain offices. So um, it gave me a whole new level of empathy for those employees on my team that are full-time remote work yeah. employees and just what you need to be able to do to make them feel a part of that community and develop those relationships and make them feel part of the extended team. And I definitely did not have a good um, grasp on that or a lot of a lot of understanding of what that really felt like. Everybody has been forced into this. Um, and I really hope that we don't, you know, even when this passes that, you know, I hope we hold on to some of those, those changes, like just being, uh, using a few minutes at, at the beginning of every meeting to see how people are doing or that Slack love chain that you, <laughs> that you guys had, you know, like, I, I think that's so great, you know, just being able to share the good work that people are doing, um, spread some kind words, you know, we're all, you know, dealing with different things. You don't know what people are dealing with individually in their own lives. And I think that goodness goes, goes a long way. You know, you want to pay it forward. So, um, this has been really awesome. Thank you so much for Thanks. just sharing with me things that you're going through, how you're thinking about your day and, and stuff that's working for you in a household full of, um, you know, three young girls. And um, I really appreciate it. So now, now we go start our day. Go get them, Kara. Thanks. You too, Lauren. All right. Take care. Bye. Bye.